What's up, everybody, and what is up? Oh. That's right, the swordfish might just be the most interesting take on a balisong that I've ever seen, with a construction made fully out of aluminum, including the blade. Now, Squid Industries is no stranger to using weird materials when building a balisong. In fact, they can mostly be attributed to the fact that we have aluminum channel handle balisongs at all. Their process of innovation was led mainly by Lucas's drive to create interesting and worthwhile products that cover new facets of the hobby that most others weren't even aware of in the first place. I've always been impressed by Squid's ability to push the boundaries of what a balisong can be, especially in the face of what can often be a pretty negative community when it comes to new ideas. In chronological order, people were openly negative towards the idea of balisongs being made out of channel aluminum, sandwich aluminum, plastic, aluminum with a live blade, channel aluminum with G10, and now an all aluminum pensless design. All of which are products that Squid was the first to create and all were mostly well received. And now, well, honestly, the community has gotten a lot more accepting of new ideas, which is good, but will the concept of this fully aluminum balisong change the hobby forever? Well, no. But you know what will change the hobby forever? Supporting this channel on Patreon. Tiers start at just three bucks a month and patrons get early access to videos like these and will become one with the abyss eventually. Subscribe or don't, I'm watching you. To be fair, I say that this won't have that kind of impact on the hobby, but I actually can't be sure of that. The nature of what any hobby latches onto is always nebulous at best, and somehow Squid has always had a weirdly good grip on that in the past. However, this is what I can say. This Balisong is extremely interesting in terms of its performance, but before we get into that, we need to talk about the design of the Swordfish first. It's an interesting departure from Squid's usual stylings. It has a simplistic and minimalist design in the front with mostly plain faces and a nice cross pattern on the handles where your fingers will grip it. The blade is straightforward with a Tonto inspired spear point design that reminds me of the Zenith Live Blade from Flytanium from back in the day. The details on the blade are especially interesting with this long 3D protrusion on either side of the blade. Lucas told me while we visited him at the Squid Industries booth at Blade Show 2022 that these lines are for stability of the blade material to keep it from flexing and bending. And I've got to say, it's an elegant solution that both adds some personality to the trainer and does a good job functionally. I certainly can't bend it, and even our hulked out Brandon clone has found it to be quite the challenge. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sure you've also noticed the aggressive looking bite handle marker on the blade. Honestly, I was pretty intimidated by it when it first arrived, expecting my first run in with it to go something like, oh. But instead, I was actually surprised because it was more like, oh. Weirdly enough, this devilish looking bite handle marker on the blade is comfy? It's strange, but true. This is the perfect balance between letting you know you've messed up and being too much to handle. And it is much less sharp than the Nautilus's bite handle marker. I really like it. Honestly, the only thing that I don't like about this blade is that it is completely symmetrical, meaning that you can't tell which side of the blade is the bite handle when closed. But this is a very minor complaint for a trainer and Squid sells bite handle markers for this exact reason. But I wanna focus a bit more on the handles themselves. If you look past the simplistic design of the faces, you'll notice that they're actually pretty complex up close. Squid opted to use the same construction process as the Tsunami for the Swordfish, with this split channel handle design coming together for an interesting look. There is slight jimping along the side and an integrated speed channel into the design, which helps a lot with grip. Overall, I really do like what they came up with. It's subtle yet detailed, and the cool hidden features like swordfish written within each part of the handle is very neat. I think it manages to find a good balance between aesthetics and functionality, which is exactly what I like to see. 
Now, let's talk about the build of this thing because it's really unique. Squid defines this balisong as the first production balisong to feature an all aluminum pinsless design. And I would say that that's accurate. Weirdly, this is Squid's first pinsless design balisong, and yet that part feels like it's sort of a secondary feature to the all aluminum construction. But I think it is an important thing to cover. This is a very interesting pinsless implementation because as far as I'm aware, it's the only one to feature like-on-like -like material contact. What this means is that both the handles and the blade are made of the same high-quality 7075 aluminum. So, unlike most pinsless designs that feature hard steel contacting softer titanium, there is no hardness difference between the handles and the blade. This means, in practice, that there should be very little deterioration of the handle gap over time. According to Squid, they have done extensive testing to make sure that this idea is workable before releasing it to the public, but in the end, only time will tell. I can say that after several months of ownership, both Brandon and I have seen no changes in terms of the handle gap deteriorating. Something I will note is that there is an aesthetic impact from the pinsless design, with the anodization on the blade and handles slowly going away on the contact areas, and this is something that Brandon experienced much faster than I did. So, it's a minor problem, but it does exist, and it seems to vary from flipper to flipper. Speaking of the anodization, this is actually one of the coolest parts of the construction in my opinion. Due to the ability to anodize aluminum to any color using dyes, you can have each part of the handles and the blade be different colors. This means that if you wanted to, you could have a one, two, three, four, five color swordfish for uh, some reason. Practically, this means that the swordfish is now the first fully orange metal balisong in my collection, which is pretty cool. That also means that Brandon's can look like a lightsaber due to the red blade. I'll be your daddy. <laughs> When it comes to the hardware, I am impressed with its durability. Squid has been making their own hardware for quite some time at this point, and I think that has benefited their build quality a lot. However, for whatever reason, Brandon and I have noticed a pattern of their pivot systems being extremely difficult to take apart specifically. Tuning can be a little difficult from knife to knife, but the consistent issue that has persisted is the ability to take it apart in the first place. We aren't sure if this is due to the Loctite they use upon assembly, or if if it's just the construction of the hardware itself. What I can say is that if it was Loctite, this should be an issue that solves itself after the first disassembly, but that has not been the case in our experience. Reassembly has always gone great, very smoothly, but disassembly is where we have had trouble, which we shouldn't because we've taken apart a lot of balisongs. To this day, even our hulked out Brandon clone has trouble getting this thing apart. No, don't make me do it again, please. Speaking of, here is an actual, unedited clip of Brandon attempting to disassemble his balisong. And now here's a clip of me doing the exact same thing hours later. Oh my god. <laughs> That's nice. We are about to shoot the swordfish review and I asked Will, can you try to unscrew this really quick? And that's after I've taken it apart. That's insane. As you can see, it's a weird experience, and we're not sure why. One thing that I can say is for a balisong that is supposed to be customized using an adjustable weight system, this isn't great. It's a similar reason to why I'm so afraid to disassemble my Tsunami. But all in all, it does have a good build, and it'll hold up to drops well without completely destroying the finish. And the blade is much more sturdy than I would have initially thought. I am impressed with how nice it feels being a fully aluminum construction, regardless of the minor issues it has. Speaking of things that I'm impressed with that have minor issues, our merch store is full of awesome products and designs that you will love. Or you won't. You won't know until you try now, will you? Wilhirsch.gay. We have a new design featuring the Volt being held by a fox skull, and I am absolutely in love with the way it looks. Also, as things warm up, products like the hoodies and beanies will be moving back into retirement, so make sure that you pick one up before that happens if you want it. Or don't. Will her stock A. The 
flipping aspect of the swordfish is weird. It's weird. The design is much closer to that of the Tsunami than any of their other products. That and the lightweight may indicate to you that it will flip similarly to the Tsunami. It does not. It's just unique to say the least, and I think that's due to the less dense nature of the aluminum, but the blade carries a lot less momentum than it would otherwise. It's also pretty light at 3.8 ounces, is very long, and has relatively thin handles. However, I don't know if this is totally a bad thing. It is very much something to get used to, but for me, it took a while to be able to get into a proper groove with this thing. As more and more adjustable weight systems appear on the market, I think it is necessary to realize that weight distribution is just as important as balance in general. Placing extra weight pins at the bottom of the handles does in fact affect the flipping, but it does so in more ways than just affecting the balance. The concept of moment of inertia is something that I've talked about before, specifically in Brandon's Prisma review, which uh, he did this a lot in. Oh no! Essentially, it just means that the more that you concentrate weight at the end of a moving piece, the more it will resist changes to its motion. For a balisong, this means that if you concentrate more weight at the ends of the handles, you'll end up with a stranger flipping experience. Something that I think is a neat implementation of this is the new Flipforge edit. He decided to use longer rods of metal inside of the construction of the balisong. This spreads the weight over a larger area instead of concentrating it at the end and means that you have a better flipping experience on a balisong like this than a balisong like this. I don't think it is a massive problem and it is nice being able to change the balance to fit your preference. However, the fact that the blade is so much less dense than steel already means that you're going to have a weird experience. So the added weights at the end of the handles can amplify this issue. But is this weirdness an inherently bad thing? Well, much like hulked out Brandon, I think that we can all learn to appreciate the weird things in our lives. It's okay. No, it's not. <laughs> I find that I am less consistent on this balisong in general. And so if you're looking for a tsunami at a low price flipping experience, I don't really think that's what you're going to get here. Instead, what you'll be getting is a very unique and compelling flipping experience that I think will really resonate with some of you. For others, well, it's not that crazy. I can pull off most tricks that I throw at it, but I just find it to be less consistent than I normally would. Its grip is good, but not fantastic, and my biggest gripe is the very square shape of the handles. They are rather rectangular, which impacts the fanning performance in my opinion, and can make ladders weird. But my opinions are just that, my own. Interestingly enough, my husband, Joe, actually really enjoyed the swordfish, stating that he wanted one almost immediately after trying it out for the first time. Ethan from Camaro EE slash Blade Bias wasn't that impressed with the swordfish, but Ty from Blade Bias really liked this thing. This is all to say that while I might not find it that compelling, it is a good balisong at the end of the day, and some people will really connect with it, and I think that's great. Now, one thing we've been asked about is the difference between the Swordfish and the Squid Trainer V4. Both of these products have almost the exact same price, and so seem to be poised as comparable to one another. To answer this question, Brandon actually purchased his very own Squid Trainer V4, and so I'm gonna go ahead and let him talk about that for a bit. Brandon? Ah! Ooh. So the Squid Trainer V4 and the Swordfish have the same exact price at $175. And the Swordfish is technically cheaper in some ways if you factor in that the colored blades don't cost anything extra. The Squid Industries product line has always been pretty linear, with an increase in price almost always signifying an increase in features. But the Swordfish shakes that up substantially. In our opinion, the Squid Trainer and the Swordfish are very different balisongs. The look, the feel in the hand, the weight, the customizability are all in completely different ballparks. As Will said, the Swordfish appears to be a more affordable tsunami, whereas the Squid Trainer is the Squid Trainer. They both have aluminum handles and a bushing pivot system. And that's pretty much where the similarities end. <laughs> The materials used, 6061 aluminum, 7075, steel blade, aluminum blade. The weight, 4.6 ounces, 3.8 ounces, nearly a 20% difference. The balance, neutral, modular handle bias. The texture, machine texture, just a bead blast texture. 
The jimping, long and rough jimping on both sides of the handles. And this just has these little cutouts just on one side. They're completely different products in our eyes. I was one of the people that was skeptical about them having two different products at the same exact price, but they really are completely different experiences that different people will enjoy for different reasons. And I honestly think that's pretty cool. The Squidge Hunter V3.5 was certainly good in a lot of ways, but wasn't really competitive in terms of price with other options on the market. But now the V4 is, including when put head to head with the Swordfish. If I personally had to pick, I would pick the Squid Trainer for objective flipping reasons, since I find myself much more consistent on this, mostly due to the much better grip and more traditional balancing. And the new sound of the Squid Trainer is fucking cool. The Swordfish doesn't even have the signature Squid Industries clack, really. But for subjective reasons, I would pick the Swordfish because I just love customizability. I do enjoy the Swordfish more than the Squiddy, the Mako, and the Triton by a pretty large amount. But it doesn't really come close to beating stuff like the Krakarakin or the Prisma or the Nautilus, 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 <sighs> Whoa. We have those two shots. Oh. Sex is a dragon. <laughs> And so, my final thoughts on the Swordfish are pretty straightforward. It's good, but not life-changing. Easily good enough and unique enough that for some people, it'll really connect with their flipping style. If you want a little bit more of an in-depth look on this thing, consider our BS score list. The score for this Balasong is pretty much in the middle, with a slight bump to the unboxing score due to the fact that Squid is now including extra hardware with their products, which is fantastic to see. But other than that, there isn't that much super notable about the Swordfish in terms of score. Also, we did in fact do the BS score for the Squid Trainer V4, which is a little bit interesting. You can see it's bumped up in a number of places and it does perform better than the Swordfish in terms of flipping. Squid has always pushed the envelope with their products, and I think that this is a great example of that. I'm looking forward to more color options in the future, and I'm interested to see where this format might evolve as well. Honestly, something else that's cool about the full aluminum construction is that you can have engraving on the blade. On mine, it has the Squid Industries logo, and then on the other side, it says willhirsch.gay. And for Brandon's, it has the Squid Industries logo, and on the other side, it says hashtag not Shap. I love this little bit of customization and think that it's awesome to be able to add to your Balasong. Either way, thank you to Squid Industries for sending out these units for review. If you are interested in getting your own Swordfish or any of the Squid product line, consider using our website squid.wilhirsch.gay. Squid.wilhirsch.gay is a web link that will take you to the Squid Industries official website and automatically apply our discount code at checkout. This code will give you a nice discount for your purchase and supports us at the same time. If you'd like to support us more directly, you could also donate to our Patreon. Join awesome people on the private community Discord like Not Bunny and Cthulhu and get access to these videos days in advance of the public. We very much appreciate every single one of you who supports us and that support is what allows us to have a base of stability while we work harder and longer on these videos. It has been amazing watching the end credits list fill up and up and up with each passing video, so thank you all so much for what you do for this channel. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, Brandon and I are gonna test out these new upgrades to the Swordfish. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. You literally don't. Oh.